Awake living into uncharted territory. Together. Accelerating your wellness path. Plus, your interconnectivity at the same time. It's not your grandma's or your Veda, but it kind of is. It's the Yoga Healer Real Life Show with Kate Stillman. Hello, it's Kate, and welcome back to the Yoga Healer Real Life Show. And today's show is Sean Guinan of environmentalpediatrics.com and holistic kids, K I D Z.com. Sean, besides being a father of four, is an expert in pediatric acupuncture and in rewilding our kids. And so today's conversation really taps into his background as both an environmental biologist, as an acupuncturist, and as someone who has studied a lot of environmental medicine. He totally knows what's going on. So listen to everything he says and test it out and take it in and notice. Notice for yourself on what is really working for the human species, raising the next generation. All right, on to Sean after these messages. Oh, and big news, Sean is starting a course Nature Prescriptions 101, Healing Nature Deficit Disorder in Children from the Outside In. It's really geared to wellness professionals and holistic healers who are working with kids with obesity, allergies, asthma, attention deficit disorders, motor control issues, sensory processing disorders. And anyone who's like basically working with kids should take this class. Go to yogahealer.com forward slash pediatrics. Today's podcast is brought to you by Awake Living. If you are operating at a higher level of consciousness, if you know how to take care of your body, then you are eligible to apply for your free Awake Living coaching session at yogahealer.com forward slash awake. We're coaching peeps who want to optimize their time, hit their goals, up their game, refine relationship resonance, and expand their wealth. Check it out at yogahealer.com forward slash awake. This offer is time limited, so act now. I'm here with Sean Guinan of environmentalpediatrics.com. And Sean and I first met when you took the Yoga Healer Business course a few years ago. And then we lost touch a little bit while you moved and had another baby and got settled in a new area. And then you reached out and said like, hey, I'm like, I'm up and running again. And I have this really great program and uh and let's talk about rewilding medicine and helping kids heal and preventing preventing the diseases of like that we're currently seeing in adults everywhere right which it's just like i feel like we're a junk show as a species right now yeah that's very true for sure and, and thanks for having me also i'm super stoked to be here but yeah it's just it's such a conundrum right it's like how do we live in modern day but kind of honor what it means to like um, you know, go with the rhythms of, of nature, you know, and just kind of, you know, find that that flow within everything and within a system, too, that's just kind of jacked <laughs> and really positioned against that happening, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I do know. I mean, it's re- it's 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 serious now. It's like you go in the grocery store and most of the stuff is not really suited for your physiology. I mean, there's it's tough. And then even like with with the whole orientation of the of the holistic industry, it seems like it went heavy into supplementation in the last 30 years or like since its arrival, because that's where the money is. And there's just like nothing really, nothing really makes that much sense. Yesterday, I was on a mountain bike ride with my uh, with my brother and my husband, my two favorite mountain bike partners. And we um, stopped along this, you know, we stopped along these like little creek crossings and I'm like, stop harvest you know <laughs> I'm about, get off the bikes <laughs> get off the bike. like we're already off the bikes anyways i'm like everyone pick your greens for the week and you That's know right. they're used to it now after a few years of hanging out with me and they get that i'm not going to stop doing this and now they're interested so something's changing enough at like the cutting edge of culture where people are realizing that nutrient diversity is part of the name of the game and it's, yeah, it's a part of it but but you realize that most people don't even have the sort of skill set to do that either a they don't notice they'd yeah. be just you know whizzing along and just be oblivious or they're scared right they're afraid yeah. like, I don't, oh that plant might kill me or i work a lot with kids right so it's might might kill my child <laughs> yeah. and you're like yes you have to be selective this is very true and educated about your local environment yeah but but dis you know disconnecting from it completely isn't really going to do as much service. That's for sure. You know? Yeah. So let's talk about this. Cause I was at, we were had a little dinner party the other night. We were talking about, um, you know, someone was like, everyone needs to be on probiotics. And I was like, well, 
Uh, no, not, I don't agree with it. I mean, I'm like, if you just, if you know, like the, that morning I had gone out into the field near our new house and picked some thistle, right? Yeah. And, and didn't, and didn't like scrub the heck out of it. Didn't totally like disinfect it before. Thank you for that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it, so let's talk about like the prebiotic effect of having dirt and microorganisms back in our food instead of having everything like hyper sanitized before it enters our palate. Exactly. And to be honest, even little critters on there, even little bugs and all the rest of it, it's like, that's, that's, that's all real juice in there. You know, we, we want that in there and removing that in this whole like hygiene focus, you know, over sanitized culture, you know, really is not actually being helpful. And what we're finding is it's just being super harmful for sure. So yeah, we want the dirt on the plants. We want all of that. No, do you need to take a probiotic supplement? Does everyone need to take one every day? I think the probiotic industry would like you to think that for sure, of course. You know, but but when we actually look at it, no, no, not at all. Yes, probiotics can be therapeutic for a period of time. You know, yeah. Uh, if someone is is just super out of balance or there's a lot of dysbiosis and balance of, of sort of you know good and harmful bacteria. Well, wait, let's talk about this because like, what if, I mean, for me, I'm like, why not just make your own sauerkraut and add right. some different, I, when I talked with uh, the wild fermentation guy, um, what's his name? Sander. Yeah. Katz, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Great. You guy. Know, he's like the more, he's, as far as the science goes, the more different stuff you add. So if you have like carrots and cabbage and some apples, like you're getting all these different strains of, of probiotic. No and that's it. And they're local. Right. It's like ultra local micro ecology, these little microorganisms that are just going to be feeding off of it. And it's built in fiber, the fiber right from those plants and diverse plants are what they're going to be feeding off of when they're in your gut, too. So, uh, so yeah. At, right. You know, yeah. So that's their food source. We have to think of it. It's like our insides. It's just microcosm of the macrocosm. Right. So yeah. it's there's a whole extensive and really complex ecosystem that's going on inside of us. Yeah. And yeah. we can honor that by honoring the external ecosystem or the external external environment and our relationship to it. But, you know, with that said, you know, some folks are coming in and they they want that pill. Well, I mean, I think that's <laughs> just know? the thing. We've been trained to the pill and we've been trained and, and the pill. I mean, my whole point is like, if you got a whole bunch of pills and you got a whole bunch of powders and you're mixed, you're, you're just, you're, you're, it's like, okay, that might be closer to whatever you were doing before. Right. Right. right? But yeah. like, just get that. Like at some point it gets really inexpensive Mm -hmm. Right. It gets really <laughs> local. It's all about the relationships between you and the food producers in your ecosystem. Yeah. And some of those food producers are the plants themselves. So you start talking to people and you start talking to plants and you start getting more involved and you start, you know, doing things like we did yesterday, which is like grabbing a bunch of leaves and yeah. drawing them out overnight and adding them to green stuff this morning, you know, and it and it gets really connected and really easy. And it doesn't look like an expensive supplement in a bottle at some point. Right. Absolutely. How I use it, though, is that bridge yeah. where it's like if their reality, right, where their reality is, so like it takes a time to up their reality. Right. So yeah. if they're coming in, they're expecting a supplement, expecting a pill. It's like, fine, I can do that for you. Yeah. That's within my scope. That's within my training, whatever. Yeah. That's where I start you. But realize that that is not the end goal here. Right. You yeah. know, and then as they start feeling better in their bodies, we have a series of conversations over time and their worldview begins to shift and begins to change. Then we start having those conversations of like, hey, I'm going to give you this top 10 list of probiotic rich foods and we're going to start there. Sure. Go ahead. You can try and buy them in the store. Go for it. But eventually we're going to teach you some skills. Yeah. <laughs> So, so tell people what what are some of those they're gonna they're they're thinking that right now like what are the ones yeah like in terms of probiotic rich foods yep. you mean yeah, sauerkraut's top of the list is what we're finding like the probiotic load of all those microbes that's top dog and as you said so easy to make and and yeah. awesome kimchi is another one if you, if you like a little spice kombucha if you want the drinks or kefir and, and that a lot of times with kefir people think oh it's dairy and maybe I don't do dairy it's like no 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 there's water based kefir it's all good don't yep. don't sweat it <laughs> right yep. and you can make that again order the grains online or whatever get your friend who's making kefir maybe hopefully you got some friends in a community rallying around you right yeah, yeah. or start one or just like find one other oh. friend and you make the sauerkraut and they make the kefir and bam now you've got both yep. And then you're good, right? Exactly. And and some folks, um, you know, are a little, again, with the dairy thing, raw milk and raw milk products, believe it or not, can be quite therapeutic. You know, oh, yeah. I'll describe them for kids, even for asthma, respiratory issues and yeah. all the rest of it. It really enhances immune functioning. Well, we in Ayurveda, like that's for the Vata types of, it's not for, the, I mean, even with Kapha types, you can use the turmeric and ginger with it and you can kind of, yeah. you know, kind of antidote yeah. it. But 
Yeah, right? and, that's huge. and it's like, it's, it's moderation. It's like, what else are you doing? Do I want you sitting like down and eating 12 glasses of raw milk? No, that's not helpful. <laughs> right? You know, yeah. But a little bit here and there is like very much more as nature intended rather than this homogenized pasteurized product is really a food product then at that point. And it's not real food, right? You know, yeah. but there are some therapeutic benefits to it, again, depending on the person, depending on the presentation and all the rest of it, you know, yeah. um, but those are definitely some, I mean, those are like my right. top ones for sure. That yeah. are like just no brainers for people, you know, yeah. that, that we really, we got to get them going. And most of them, again, you can make them at home, you know, which is, yeah. Awesome. you know, and I can imagine a lot of people saying like, Oh, my kid won't eat sauerkraut. But for us, it was interesting and I'm not sure when Indy became like this massive sauerkraut fan that she is today, but uh, but even just starting, like we use, we use shot glasses a lot in our house for non-traditional means and like just pouring like a little bit of like pouring a shot glass half full with some yep. sauerkraut juice yep. and just yeah. saying like, this happens before that happens. This is your part of your family culture, right? Yeah. The way we do things is uh, one of my favorite definitions of culture. The way we do things, just this like collective effort, a belief system, and then an action that comes from it. Right. And the idea is that we can build that up. A lot of times parents though resist that because they may, may themselves be kind of on the edge of like, do I want to try this? Is this weird enough? This wasn't part of my family culture growing right, up. Right. We define that for your family. Yeah. I have four kids. They're all throwing back sauerkraut. I mean, our youngest is nine months and we'll give him a little bit of sauerkraut juice. Yeah. And he loves it. You know, yeah. it's, it's also part of, again, their normal. It's like, what is yeah. their, you know? Well, what it's do we defining that, right? Defining like, this is what our family culture is going to be. And knowing that like, it, I mean, it's like any food culture you add, like when I was making some sauerkraut the other day, and I'm like, I think I'm going to just like shred an apple and throw that in there. It's like, it's constantly evolving. And yeah. talking to Sandra Katz about, it's so fun about because he's like the fermentation expert, right? Yeah, totally, and, yeah. And he talks so much about really just like continually evolving the taste and how no two batches can ever turn yeah. out the same. And if we get this within our own families that like, oh, your family culture is going to be totally unique to you. You're constantly inventing and reinventing it and defining right. it. Right. And right. Is, it, is it working or what do you right. need to add in next? Is it a little grated apple? <laughs> but your... how awesome and how beautiful is that though too, right? That a child gets to see it's like your relationship changes. What is what is normal within one moment isn't normal within the next moment. And there's a great learning kind of experience within that too. But what I'll also add to that conversation is like, you know, the like microbiome stuff and all the rest of it, that can even happen outside of food. And that's what a lot of people don't realize yeah. too. Like, let your kids get just filthy. You know, they should be puddle jumping, mud pie making, digging around for worms. I mean, that stuff should be happening. With them sitting there, their hands in the soil, their skin microbiome's enhanced, right? They're breathing it in their lung microbiome. That's a thing, right? Yeah. That's enhanced as well, too. Obviously, we want them having a little bit in their oral microbiome, their mouth microbiome, then they ingest it, it gets into their stomach, you know, or their, or their gastrointestinal system, their, their uh, gut microbiome. And so know that it's like, it's even just like the notion of like, it's okay to be outside. I mean, I think it, it's like American wow. children spend 90% of their wow. time indoors. Oh, it's so sad. 90%. Oh. That is such a diversion from where we came. I mean, think about it. We're adapted to the local environment, right? Our bodies, our minds, our emotional body, our spiritual body has this resonance and a deep resonance with the natural world. What happens when we break from that? We get sick. <laughs> Yeah. We get sick and our kids do too. And they're, and they're showing it, you know, and it's this whole phenomenon of nature deficit disorder and kind of a, a rabbit hole, you know, in and of itself. Um, but the idea is, is like, you know, we, we can think of health and well-being not just necessarily as what we put in our body, which is such a key component to it, but what is our relationship of our bodies Yeah. with, and, and again, the, the multiple layers of our, of the, of the human experience, right? You know, yeah. not just physical. Yeah. with the external environment and how can we bridge the gap? How can we help children, families, and communities really kind of rewild their family unit? Yeah. <laughs> right? No, it's, and, it's, you know, it's huge. Cool. It's, outside. it's all good. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, and that's a piece. I mean, yesterday was like Mother's Day, right? It's like, what's the traditional Mother's Day American way? It's like, you go out to the restaurant, you do your thing, you get like your mom flowers that are just like pesticide ridden flowers usually, yeah. <laughs> you know, totally. really cultivated. Yeah, like, just, which like are bad for like the workers who pick them. I mean, like killing, right. like literally giving cancer to the workers that pick them. Right. It's like, what is that doing yeah. to our communities? Right. Yeah. It's, it's like, think about that. The deeper connections of that versus like our family tradition is like, no, we go for the family hike. You know. Yeah. It's like we go to, and it was. I mean, we're in the Pacific Northwest now, right? So we're in Washington State, so it rains. 
Right. A fair amount of the time. Yeah. So we're just, you know, we just go, you get your get up on and you just go and get super muddy and then just have a blast. Right. Yeah, but a totally. lot of people are like, no, I need to wait for like a good day and it's got to be the perfect, you know, yeah. <laughs> perfect thing. And you're like, yeah, no, 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 y'all. That's not how this goes. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's like we want children in particular, um, and, and there's reasons for this, but but families as a whole to really be making this um, have a consistency with their relationship with the natural world. Yeah. And, you know, in order for us as, as then a larger culture to remember our way. Yeah. Because we've totally forgotten our way. You yeah. Know? Oh, my gosh. It's crazy. I mean, so yesterday we were experimenting. We were mountain biking. And uh, we were experimenting with uh, with intermittent it's like intermittent it's like interval training with intermittent resting yeah yeah yeah. so yeah. we'd like climb a massive hill and then we'd throw our bikes down and lay down on the on the ground and just breathe for 90 seconds and then we'd like do it again <laughs> yeah. and do the next section and do it and we noticed so me and my brother and my husband we noticed at the end of the ride we we were refreshed right like we were all just like okay there's no lack we had no lactic acid like there was yeah. none of that sort of like oh. oh my god that was such a big you know Totally. And, and how epic do you feel afterwards and during that experience? Yeah, right? and that so so then my my brother's like, well, does it matter if you're lying on the ground or if you're lying on the earth? You know what I mean? Like if you're indoors or outdoors, and I'm like, it def we and we're all like, it definitely matters that you're just yeah. getting really really tired, getting your heart rate really really, high, and then you're like like flat on the earth and just allowing that. Yeah vibration yeah, you're i mean you're tapping in right it's like mama nature there she is you're just resting in her arms and and i think that that's that is it is key i would absolutely agree you know the japanese came up with this concept called shinrin yoku i don't know if you've ever heard of it right so so i'm a you know chinese medicine practitioner too so there's this east asian influence and part of what they found you know it's beginning in 1982 give or take uh, the japanese started to do a series of research on forest bathing yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah <laughs> right you know that yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. The, yeah. the translation of that, yeah, which is basically like what happens. Let's be curious about what happens when people kind of get out into the natural environment. Theirs was particular in forest in, environments, but but the same is true now for fields, you know, around water, like streams, rivers, the ocean. You know, yeah. those people who have this resonance with, like, I just need to be near water, man. You yeah. Know, like, yeah, you're right. You do. <laughs> you know, you're absolutely. Yeah. And some people more than others. Some people need to be around trees. But the therapeutic effects of that are really well documented. I mean, we've got 40 years of research now kind of backing that up. So, so it's like backing up the lived experience, right? Isn't it always come down to that? It's like, I know this. And now we have the research to say that, oh, it's really good for me. Right. But for that, again, that Western mind, they're like, yeah, we need to see numbers. We need to just like, yeah. all right, and I have them. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. But your experience instead. Yeah. Tell me what that's like. Right. <laughs> right? right. You know, yeah, you feel it. I mean, you do feel it. And I think that that's, that's part of like turning the tide on this degree of like chronic degenerative illness, chronic sickness, oh, all yeah. these people that are, yeah, and maybe this may not be sickness to the point where people are hospitalized, but they are certainly not well. Oh, yeah. And they just think that's aging, right? They confuse it with yeah. aging. Totally. And you're like, oh, wait, but what if it's your 10 year old? All oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, no, it's just normal for them to be on ADHD medication. Right. Because right. that's what you're seeing in the clinic, right? You're just seeing oh, yeah. they're, they come in, they're already on drugs. Is that the deal? Yeah. I mean, pharmaceuticals are the go-to. I mean, the fastest growing market right now for antidepressant medication is preschoolers. Oh, sh light. That, right? That's three and four-year-olds, Kate. Three and four-year-olds. Uh... Right? And these are often, I mean, they, then the other part of that conversation. Well, let's start about that whole thing. I mean, it starts, I mean, a typical birth right now, right? The, the newborns injected within an hour of uh -huh. coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hepi is the vaccination that they give to kids, and, and, then, and then they put erythromycin uh, drops in their eyes, you know, to prevent that. But but even let's talk about the birth. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Heavily right. medicalized. It's right. like percentage of home births now in the United States, super duper low. It's growing oh again, but it's, but it's super but, low. Right, but we're like 1%. Yeah, like but, yeah, it's yeah, like that. Yeah, one percent. Yeah. But, but it, it's funny. My my Crazy. wife is a student midwife right now for you know home birth midwife, and so she's like steeped within that now yeah. too. She's like, oh my god, it's like how pregnancy, labor and delivery, and postpartum is pathologized. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's insane. To be like, oh no, you're sick. It's a condition it's that needs insane. to be managed. It's totally this insane. In essence, where this all starts. Yeah, it is, it's and it's and it's that sense of you're not in control. Someone else. Right. Besides, you knows better for you and your baby. And it's like the yeah. it's the absolute antithesis of normal archetypal feminine empowerment, which is 
guess what? The power's within you and you know yep. best. Mother knows best. That's Absolutely. How, yeah. Mama knows best, right? And yeah. and mama and baby together do their own little dance. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Relationship, and why can't we kind of give them the space, hold the space right. for them to do that, right? That's the, that's the spark of their future relationship right there. Right. You know? right. But what we find is when all these interventions happen, yeah. you know, during like labor and delivery, during pregnancy, during postpartum or whatever, it really sets the stage for future illness, right? And there's yeah. a whole model over the fetal origins of adult disease model. It's like, you know, the sickness starts that we see in adulthood starts in utero. In the second half of this show, we talk about challenging our current reality to embrace the notion that we have adapted to our environment over tens of thousands of years, and now we're systematically removing ourselves from it. So we teach you how to systematically re-engage with your environment. It's super fun. Sean is brimming with just grounded, deep wisdom. We'll be back in a minute. You've done some serious work. You're operating at a higher level of consciousness. You know how to take care of your body. You'd like to uplevel other aspects in your life, your space, your time, your dharma, your flow, and your body. Ether, air, fire, water, earth. I'm taking a posse of peeps into the Awake Living course. 50 people will be selected to join this expedition. We're opening the doors to anyone who is feeling great and wants to uplevel how they align their life, time optimization, space alignment, hitting goals, wealth expansion, and day-to-day -day ease. If you're interested in Awake Living, we have a super fun process for you to experience. Go to yogahealer.com forward slash awake. Sign up for your free Awake Living coaching session. During your free Awake Living coaching session, you will refine the next version of you. As a bonus, you'll receive the 60-minute workshop, Insider Scoop, on how I optimize my day as a yoga mom, tribe leader, and social entrepreneur. Go to yogahealer.com forward slash awake and sign up for your free Awake Living coaching session. Yeah. So talk about that. Cause there's, I saw on your blog, like this whole sense of like, when we take, when we take a, whatever, a 50,000 foot view of what's happening with adult illness and we go back to childhood trauma and we go back to all these different, yeah, you know, just, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's a thing. It's like, so think about it. Our, our bodies are a map and they hold the memory of all of our experiences, whether they're conscious or subconscious experiences. So yes, it is true that we may as adult not necessarily remember, like like consciously, you know, be able to bring up memories of uh, being in utero, of the sort of earliest moments of our life outside of mom's body, and then those early childhood years, childhood years. But at the same time, what we're finding is that if there is an adverse childhood experience, so if there is a trauma, abuse, neglect, and again, this can be physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual, yeah. right? Yeah. Then, then what that does is it becomes additive. So each experience literally accumulates and then magnifies throughout our lifetime. So children, for example, who do experience any of their called ACEs, any of those adverse childhood experiences, and, and this goes to birth trauma as well, okay? Yeah. You know, what happens then is they get to adulthood and they're at greater risk for obesity, for type 2 diabetes, for cardiovascular disease. I mean, they're even finding for cognitive uh, dysfunction like Alzheimer's and dementia later, like later years. Yeah, even, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Think of autoimmune conditions, um, MS, lupus, RA, like rheumatoid arthritis, all these kinds of um, conditions. Fibromyalgia is a real big one as well, too. This mysterious pain everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think your body's telling you something's been just packed in there. How do we unpack that? You know, it was one of my first aha moments, honestly, because I work with adults too, right? It's like, you know, I was treating a lot of fibromyalgia patients, like pain, 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 pain. And when we really got down to it, when we really kind of like unburied it, I just started to just, um, out of more intuitive than anything else, ask about their childhood. Yeah. More often than not, we'd have to break out the tissue box. They would just release the floodgates. They'd be like, why are you asking me that? Yeah. It's like, because it matters, yeah. right? It matters. And then, and then they go into their whole history of yeah. all of it, right? And then when we bring it back to like- And it's stuff, like trauma and abuse. I mean, it's not light. It's- it, Oh no, it's not light stuff, but it can be subtle in the sense of think of like the angry dad or think about it like the checked out mom, yeah. right? You know what I mean? Or just think about a, a family experiencing a lot of like financial hardship even. I mean, all that stuff is factored into it. Or think of the over-medicalized- labor and delivery experience, yeah. where a mom may have been on tons of antibiotics, she got an epidural, right? She then, you know, is led to believe that she, that her body can't do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she might, she might even harm her baby if she tries to birth this baby. So we have to cut it out, 
Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. And don't get me wrong here, folks. It's like I'm not saying cesarean birth is is not warranted at times because it is and, and has certainly saved lives. But now what we're seeing is those rates of cesarean births are actually causing more harm than good. Right. The United States has like the second highest infant and maternal death rates in the world. We're second to Papua New Guinea. I mean, think about this, right? You know, so so go figure. Like, what what is that about, right? But those are all experiences that that leave an impression on a child, just yeah. like they leave an impression on a mom. Yeah, I think all the moms here listening, if you've had uh, a sort of um, disempowering birth experience, you get this. That charge is still there, yeah. and sometimes there's a freshness and a sharpness to it. Well, but we often don't want to look at it. I mean, it's just a tough time to live, right? Because we've got all these environmental toxins. We walk into the grocery store, it's like the odds are stacked against us. You know, yeah. there's yeah. there's so much to it, and it's like I don't want to believe this too. Like I don't want to believe. You know, and many of us are of the generation where we had our own birth trauma, right? And then we sort of perpetuated the cycle in the next generation. And it's just like, oh my gosh, this is all too much. But I just want to interject from working with the, you know, the Living Are Your Veda course members, we they all go through an understanding of health history all the way back to conception. Yeah. Um, as they're learning Ayurveda, they're looking at and digesting this. And there is this digestion and absorption and recalibration process that gets to the it gets to the root of those aha moments and just having the perspective of like hey you know what you don't have to you don't have to dive into this all at once but right. just being a little curious and just allowing the insights will create more connection and more actually like some part of your nervous system will start to relax because that that otherwise the pattern is so much anxiety in it and it just it kind of like keeps you it a, is with that existential you're anxiety right. i think that that's a brilliant point is like, I don't want to confuse the matter in the sense of where these things can't be overcome. They can't be healed. We can't go through that. Yes, we can. It may be a very cathartic experience at times. Yeah. It may feel really intense and kind of like this overwhelming, like a flood, you know, coming through. But I have seen it time and time again, children, adults, families, we can all heal from this, but, but part of it is acknowledging first, Yeah. you know, Agreed. and holding that space. And really allowing us then as like holistic healers and wellness folks to really um, also be okay holding that space for people. Yeah. You know, and be like cool with that. Like, yeah, sometimes this isn't going to look super pretty, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's and it's not going to be like maybe really comfortable. But, right. but know that, that setting that intention around that and holding the space around it is just hugely and wildly therapeutic. Yeah. Well, and it really speaks to the need for, you know, for, for practitioners of all sorts, like anyone who's working in wellness is to like, to, like when it's like with the person in front of you, like how much of the whole picture are you getting? Cause they right. might, cause people come in and they say like, I just, you know, I just want to heal my back pain or I, I have fibromyalgia and I'm just looking for a diet and they come in and they already say what they want, but they don't know what they don't know because often we haven't taken the time as you know, as wellness practitioners to actually start to create space to understand the whole person and to help them understand. So even just having that, like, okay, my part of my job is they're going to tell me what they want, but I'm the practitioner, or I'm the doctor, or I'm the healer, or I'm the therapist, right? It's my job to take a bigger step back and look yeah. at the whole picture. Yeah. I mean, you want that 50,000 foot view. It's like, we can't expect them to be able to do that. Right. right. It's like, you like, think about it. It's the same with like treating family. That's so hard because it's so close. Now imagine treating yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, good luck. Let me know how that goes. I mean, I, I think, you know, I think that that, that is part of it where it's like, yeah, you're addressing their chief complaint. You know, you're addressing what, what, how their pain and suffering has manifested Yeah. in this moment. But with this notion that like, all right, but if we want to go deeper, there's an opportunity to do that, right? Yeah, if yeah. we see that 50,000 foot view, uh, you know, or at least elements of it, pieces of it, right. build that relationship with them over time, that that know, like, and trust factor that they can build with us so that they know that we're willing and capable of holding a safe space for them, yeah. then man, major, major transformation and evolution can happen within an individual. And then that is what ripples out into their community. Yeah. And their family, yeah, yeah, family and community, yeah, totally. Yeah, they, they can show up for the people they they love better, you yeah. know, show up more completely and more fully. And it's like that's really kind of what we're going for is like this grassroots kind of effort in a way, right? Yeah, yeah. To really, you know, amplify the individual in order to amplify the society as a whole. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. So let's get back to rewilding. And I mean, one of the things yesterday we set up our trampoline. So we hadn't had our trampoline in a couple of months because we were 
moving and then the it just was super wet here and we we just couldn't it just we couldn't deal until now the yard was drying out we get the trampoline up and my my daughter's in gymnastics she's on free team and this past this past week before we had the trampoline set up she's like it practices too hard and i'm like oh i've never heard her say this i'm like practice isn't too hard you're just not getting what you need all the time and that's making practice too hard. So we set the trampoline up yesterday and she's doing front flips and back flips and aerials and you know, like she's back and and you just and, and she's out there five times. The neighborhood kids are stopping over. I'm out there. My brother's out there. My husband's out like we're just back in trampoline. And the reason I bring this up is like we, for parents out there who they might look in their yard and they may have like a, a play set. They may have a swing set. Right. Right. And they may have like a, a play house. Right, mm. which is just like another place to sit around, and That's maybe right. they're like a little climbing in, a little climbing out, you know. Versus, <laughs> yeah. versus like a versus like the three. I think we spent three hundred dollars at Sam's Club, you know, yeah. five years ago on right. a trampoline, and I use it three or four times a day. Yep. You know, yeah. it's just like yeah. so. Let's talk about the first of all. I mean, the trampoline's amazing, but even just the having having activity, have like so we exercise before school because I cannot depend on school. Right. right. We right. exercise yeah. after school. We exercise after dinner. And we don't think of it as exercise. We just think of it as functional movement of like, yeah. let's make sure we're moving and playing and doing stuff that's interesting to us right now. Yeah, totally. And that and that's and that's what it is. Right. It's just like outdoor unrestricted free play, which people confuse with like, oh, I don't want my child to be bored. I need to entertain my child. Mm. They need to have structure, parent directed, you know, all this other kind of stuff. And and to a degree, some of that can be helpful, of course. I mean, I'm not knocking that, but it, but it's more that this, as you say, this sort of like free form movement, this yeah. functional movement, yeah, is is really awesome for kids, right? It's like our bodies, from the rewilding perspective, are adapted, right, to living within this three dimensional landscape. Yeah. Right. And that is highly textured. Right. So it's like even the notion of like going outside without shoes on, like blows people's minds. You right. Know? Right. So I think all those little bones in there, all the ligaments and tendons that encase our foot too, that is meant for this like contoured, multi contoured surfaces. Right. Mm-hmm. Think about what happens yeah. then when we just wear shoes all the time. It's this flat, one singular plane surface, you know? Right. And no wonder why we're developing pain in our culture, why people have low back pain, hip pain. I mean, all this other stuff, because it translates upstream, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but the notion is like, yeah, getting kids out there, getting families out there, getting adults out there, doing this kind of like activity without the mindset of like, oh, it needs to be super structured or otherwise is awesome and really warranted. But but like, think about what we are doing, though, is like we're putting kids in schools, right, where they have to sit for long periods of time. And then we're like, oh, you have an attention disorder now. <laughs> when it's like, no, 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 they just need to move, guys. You just got to move. But then we take away their uh, their recess time. Oh, yeah. We put sugar laden foods in the vending machines in the hallways of the schools now. Uh, yeah, and mandatory snack time. That's like just carb loaded. Yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy. crazy. So it's, yeah, yeah. But, and realize, I think I think part of it is like, as you say, it's like, oh, we do this before school, right? Or we do, you know, before we yeah. kind of get the door. And that's great. It's like sort of um, ritualizing and providing a rhythm to things like that is really key for busy families, especially to make this happen, you know? Yeah. It's like th- th- there's a misnomer that it takes a lot of time, money, money, energy, or effort in order to work that into your rhythm. But it could be just like 10 minutes yeah. of just like running around or rolling around outside, right? Yeah. You know? Or as you say, it could take like even five minutes, you know, hopping on the trampoline in the backyard, you know, yeah. whatever. It, it doesn't require much. Yeah, and, and I, like you, it's like it doesn't matter. Like, we, well, I mean, this morning it was like hats and jackets. It's not like... Yeah. You right. know, barefoot with shorts, everybody. Like, it's right. it, we do this if it's snowing out. It's not a, absolutely right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But again, it's because it's because it's part of your family culture, yeah. right? It's reinforced. Yeah. In rituals and rhythms of your family. Yeah. And, and that's that's what's cool, and that's what what makes this kind of happen for people. You know. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole like, oh, we need we need this structured thing. We need this activity yeah. in order for my child to get exercise, in order for my family, in order for me to get exercise. It's like, right. no, that's not what this is. Well, it brings up this other thing because one of the, my kid is highly social and and she's very emotionally sensitive and uh, and developed simultaneously. And I noticed I noticed pretty early on with her, like probably by about four years old, that she would want to talk about her emotional stuff. But I could just see her energy body was like totally blocked, like she wasn't in her body. And she's yeah. I mean, we're talking about a four year old, right? Yeah. And we see this all yeah. the time with adults who go to 
you know, they just want to talk it out. And it's like, okay, if you're going to talk to me, like we better be walking, like we better, yeah. right. We better yes. be moving. So even yeah. just having her, just getting her trained to like, okay, if we're going to talk, we're going to move for two minutes. Yeah. And yeah. then we're going to do a check-in and see, yeah. because otherwise we could talk for 20 minutes and get, and not only get nowhere, we could go backwards. Oh yeah. Oh no. It could, it could be a slippery slope for sure. Right. And that's it. It's like, um, you know, realizing that like a, some kids are very much like that, where it's like they need that movement, right? Other kids are more um, like in the sense where they actually just need almost a sense of security. They need to be held while they're mm. having a conversation like that too, right? It's like, mm. that's how you connect. That's how you allow them to connect mind body or emotional body sometimes with physical body or whatever, right? It's like, let's put you in your body first, honey. You know, let's go yeah, ahead. Yeah, like the cocoon them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas though those other kids, it's like, you know, so I, I think I'm not, not sure if I mentioned I have four kids, right? And they're also different because that's just what kids are. But it's like my older daughter, no, she's got to move it and groove it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, let's do this, honey. Or let's work this out on the trampoline right now. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do, you know what I mean? Or whatever. And it works phenomenally well. Otherwise, it's just this emotional kind of show, <laughs> you know, that happens, right? <laughs> totally. You know? Versus my, my second in line, you know, she's six now. She's like major thumb sucker, super introvert, has this whole internal kind of imagination world. It's like for her, actually, she'll retreat when she needs to like process something. Mm. And so for her, she's the one that we kind of have to sit there and, and hold and embrace and support and nurture in that way. And then she feels comfortable letting that out, right? Of yeah. like, oh, now I feel like there's a safe space for this, right? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and, and my, my emotions can move more fully and completely into my body, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, it, so that it's, makes perfect sense. Yeah. But, but it just, you know, but it just kind of depends. But, but, you know, nature can provide that for people too. Again, the whole like rewilding thing. It's like some kids, they really resonate with, Trees, make sure you're getting out in the forest a lot. If you got water near you, make sure other kids, like my thumb sucker, resonates with water. Dip her feet in the water, vunk. <laughs> you know, she's in it. You know, she's in her body, right? Mm -hmm. Like, thought, you know? Mm -hmm. And just stuff like that, too. Realize that, like, nature can be therapeutic. Our relationship with our kids can, to, to a degree, then use the external environment, you know, as a form of nurturing and supporting our family as they grow and develop over time. Yeah. It's cool stuff. So just in closing, like this whole concept, like I was saying at the dinner table last night about how we're wild monkeys and how we just, just you know, it's like we can all help each other remember <laughs> that we're wild monkeys and start acting more like and see where this goes. Because like the things that we're doing now probably are way less wild than we'll be doing in a year or two. Yeah. Right. And then just looking at that, like the, if that's if we get that, this is a, this is part of our trajectory towards health is this is this rewilding, like re getting that, like, OK, guess what? You're part of the five elements. You can't be separate from them. Yeah. And, and that if we try to look to like what's going on in mainstream culture, we know that's like, you know, regression, massive disease laden regression. Yes. And so we kind of get that we got to see who else, you know, it's like you kind of like lift your head up and you're like, who, who else has figured out the wild monkey thing, you know? <laughs> and like, what are they doing over there? Like, what are they testing? What are they experimenting with? What's working? How are they having fun? What are they, what are they also now starting to experience that they aren't, you know, they weren't experiencing before, whether that's having a, you know, a collective fermentation group in their neighborhood or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, um, you know, it's finding your community, you know, find your peeps, right. You know, and know that it's like, we are, we are greater and we are stronger in our numbers and we can learn from each other. So it's like, you know, finding that within your local community. I mean, the beauty of technology and the irony of it is we can also use this, you know, to, to tap into this larger re global rewilding community and see what yeah. people are doing. Amen. So that's super cool. And there's just like tons of information out there around that. You know, the movement toward homesteading right now, yeah. you know, yeah. it's a big push toward this. And there's, and it's so amazing to just watch it ballooning right now in response. It's like almost like a counterculture, you know, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that's really developing from this. But it's like, you know, the whole notion of the rewilding movement is like, let's reverse some of our like domestication, you yeah. know, that has happened over the past, you know, say five to 700 years or so, right? Yeah. Let's just take a step back to that point, knowing that we can go further, <laughs> you know? And, and how do we do that? How do we kind of re-engineer our relationship to the world around us and, and what and what does this look like? And and the, the truth is we're figuring it out. Yeah. Right? We're we're figuring it out. But but we can really learn from each other. And and I feel very strongly called to bring this like rewilding notion back to medicine too. Yeah. Because it's like again, you know, to bring it back to what we talked about in the beginning, it's like, is it all about supplements? Is it all about the latest like fat right. diet? Is it all about a pharmaceutical or a surgical intervention? Is is that what we're doing here? Is that medicine now? 
Maybe by conventional medicine standards, but it's certainly not healing. Yeah. <laughs> They're different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so know that like the, you know, rewilding as itself and the underlying premise of it really can also be applied to medicine. And that's what I just am like super, super excited for folks to begin to think about lately. You know what I mean? It's just like, man, just put a different thinking cap on, put this into the larger like context of evolutionary history, ecology. And yeah. All that. Exactly. Like take that big step back of your yeah. own. It's, I always say, it's like your body, it's not yours. It's like you inherited this incredible piece of technology, you know, like respect uh, it. Right? Right. Like, exactly. that, it took a while to create this, right? <laughs> well, I mean, and I think the other big point is, and it's something I say a lot is, you know, it's like be a collaborator, not a consumer. And it's that shift of like going to like consuming medicine or consuming supplements or right? Or consuming food into like a collaborating, collaborating with your environment. If you're homesteading, yep. like collaborating with your animals, collaborating with your plants, coll yep. right? collaborating with your neighbors and getting like, okay, that's part of it. Like that's a mindset shift. That's a different thinking yep. cap, like you were saying. Yep. And, and when you catch yourself in consumer mode, just yeah. know like, Hey, it, it's take a breath. Like you've it's been trained good. into that. <laughs> like that's what's going, that's the water you're swimming in. Right. Yep. Exactly. But it's like, you know, yeah, as you said, like, you know, we're all monkeys are really, you know, apes or whatever running around here, you know, and like, you know, let's go ahead and, and acknowledge that for a minute. Yeah. And allow that to alleviate some of the societal pressure that we unknowingly carry around. Mm. And that causes us harm, you know? Yeah. We have a choice. We have a choice. And it's just realizing there's a space between ourselves and a choice, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome, Sean. So much fun to have you on and uh, excited about your new course coming up. And uh, yeah, we'll have you back. So when you want to talk about a few other things that are hot, hot in the world of, of us being wild monkeys and pediatrics, uh, just let me know. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. I loved it. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening and go outside and play and rub around in the dirt and get it all over your skin and know that you are feeding yourself the five elements directly from the five elements. All right. We will be back next week with Tiffany Kirkshank of yogamedicine.com. Also has a background in acupuncture and TCM, um, but with a very different trajectory of her career. And this Thursday on Dharma and Dollars is graduation advice input I have for the graduating class at the California College of Ayurveda. This is really useful to any kind of wellness practitioner or healer who's looking for some really good career advice, no matter what level you are at. That's this Thursday on the Yoga Healer Dharma and Dollars show. And again, if you're interested in Sean's course, if you're working with kids, if you're a holistic healer, a practitioner, or if you're a parent and you want to know how to help your kids thrive, go to yogahealer.com forward slash pediatrics and check out Nature Prescriptions 101 Healing Nature Deficit Disorder in Children from the Outside In. Yoga Healer Real Life Show with Kate Stillman. Yoga Healer.